Once again, SpaceX has won the trust of the Space Force with a record-breaking mission leaving ULA in the shadows. This makes the future of ULA and its new Vulcan Centaur rocket all the more uncertain in a space industry now dominated by reusable rockets like SpaceX's Falcon 9. But the challenges for this struggling company don't stop there. The Vulcan's problems aren't just about reusability. They also stem from issues with its solid fuel boosters supplied by Northrop Grumman. So what's really wrong with the Vulcan? Where is ULA headed next? And how did CEO Tori Bruno respond to all the criticism? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. This year, SpaceX, not ULA, just helped the US Space Force pull off something truly incredible. Something that could change how fast we get critical satellites into orbit forever. So here's the story. On May 30th, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket lifted off carrying the GPS-3 SV-08 satellite, a vital upgrade for the global positioning system that billions of people rely on every single day. But here's the wild part. This satellite was prepped and launched in just three months. That's right, only three months from storage to orbit. For context, the previous record also thanks to SpaceX was five months for the GPS-3 SV-07 launch. And before that, it usually took the Space Force two years to prepare and launch one of these birds. So yeah, we're talking about cutting a two-year process down to just a quarter of that time. That's huge. This kind of rapid launch capability isn't just a flex. It's a game changer. If something goes wrong in orbit, say a satellite failure or interference, the Space Force can now replace or add a new satellite in record time keeping GPS online for everyone from smartphone users to military operations worldwide. So how did the Space Force manage to move this fast? It all came down to preparation and flexibility. First, they already had satellites built and waiting in storage. Second, and perhaps most importantly, they had rockets ready to fly thanks to SpaceX's Falcon 9. If the Space Force had still been relying on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket, this milestone probably wouldn't have happened at all. The Vulcan program faced repeated certification delays, leaving several satellites just sitting in storage waiting for a ride that never came. Eventually, the Space Force made a smart pivot. They shifted several priority missions, including the GPS-3 launches, to SpaceX's Falcon 9, a rocket that's become synonymous with reliability and rapid turnaround. The GPS-3 SV-8 mission marked the seventh successful GPS-3 launch on Falcon 9, continuing SpaceX's streak of flawless national security launches. And the Space Force couldn't hide their excitement. They said, the ability to once again demonstrate a quick turn launch of crucial capability helps us understand what it takes to make such missions happen and prepare for similar fast timelines in the future. Translation, we can now launch critical satellites fast when it really matters. And that's the real takeaway. This isn't just about one satellite. It's about proving that the U.S. military can respond rapidly to new space challenges. If something unexpected happens in orbit, they now know exactly how to get a replacement up there fast. While SpaceX keeps winning the military's trust with one flawless launch after another, ULA is falling further behind. And things just went from bad to worse. The U.S. Space Force has officially confirmed that it won't be launching any payloads on ULA's Vulcan rocket until next year. So what happened? Well, ULA had big plans for 2025. The company promised up to 10 Vulcan launches this year, a major ramp-up for its brand-new rocket meant to replace the aging Atlas V. But instead of 10, Vulcan has managed just one launch. That flight took place on August 12th, marking only the rocket's third mission ever and its very first carrying a national security payload after finally getting Space Force certification. ULA says the next launch will happen in December, but ironically, not even on Vulcan. 
it'll be using an Atlas V, one of the older rockets the company has been trying to retire. So why is Vulcan struggling so much? It all goes back to a problem that surfaced during its second test flight in late 2024. One of Vulcan's strap-on solid rocket boosters, the Northrop Grumman Gem 63XL, suffered a malfunction caused by a defect in its nozzle. Engineers traced it back to a manufacturing issue, and that discovery has triggered a lengthy investigation. Now the Space Systems Command is digging through all past flight data and hardware to verify safety before allowing the next Vulcan missions to proceed. In other words, until they're 100% sure the boosters are safe, the schedule is basically stuck in slow motion. And here's where it gets more concerning. This isn't an isolated case. That same kind of nozzle failure has appeared on other Northrop Grumman projects. Back in 2019, during ground testing of the Omega rocket, a nozzle issue caused a major test failure. And more recently, in June 2025, the new Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension, or Bowl Solid Rocket Motor, designed for NASA's Space Launch System, suffered another nozzle failure during a static fire test. With so many similar incidents, some engineers are beginning to suspect a deeper systemic problem with Northrop Grumman's nozzle design or manufacturing processes. As one commentator bluntly put it, there's something fundamentally wrong with Northrop Grumman's nozzle engineering design models or manufacturing processes. All of this adds up to a huge headache for ULA. Their brand new rocket, the one meant to lead them into a new era of high-frequency, low-cost launches, is now bottlenecked by supplier issues. And in the competitive world of spaceflight launch, cadence is everything. And unfortunately for ULA, the story doesn't end there. Because Vulcan's slow progress isn't just a technical issue anymore, it's now creating ripple effects across its customers, its reputation, and even public confidence in the company itself. These mounting delays have real consequences. For the military, one of ULA's biggest clients, it means critical satellites are sitting on the ground waiting for a ride that just isn't ready yet. In fact, together with Amazon's Kuiper project, military payloads make up almost 90% of ULA's current backlog. So when Vulcan slows down, so does everyone depending on it. ULA's official goal sounds impressive to ramp Vulcan up to two launches per month, about 24 per year. On paper, that would put them among the world's most active launch providers. But in reality, that dream feels far away. The company insists it's getting closer to that goal, yet clearly it won't happen this year, and nobody knows when it actually will. And part of the holdup comes down to infrastructure. The new rocket assembly hangar and a second mobile launch platform at Cape Canaveral, both essential to scaling up production and launch rate, have also fallen behind schedule. Here's where things really start to sting. Even if ULA did manage to hit that two launches per month goal, it wouldn't even be impressive anymore. Five years ago, that kind of cadence would have been record-breaking. But today, it's just average. SpaceX hit 25 launches way back in 2020, and in 2025, Falcon 9 alone has flown 151 times. To put that in perspective, that's more than a launch every three days. Even the old Soviet Soyuz U rocket set a record of 47 launches in 1979, nearly four per month, a record SpaceX broke years ago. In other words, the pace of innovation has left Vulcan looking seriously outdated. But the biggest issue isn't speed. It's philosophy. Vulcan is an expendable rocket. Every booster gets thrown away. Meanwhile, SpaceX reuses Falcon 9 boosters multiple times, and Blue Origin's new Glenn is already proving its own reusable design. That puts Vulcan at a massive disadvantage. As one industry watcher put it, Vulcan is definitely fifth behind SpaceX's three rockets and new Glenn. Right now, ULA's only unique value seems to be offering a trusted but very expensive option for the U.S. military. And as soon as companies other than SpaceX offer a reliable, reusable alternative, that safety net could disappear overnight. 
There's also growing concern about the long-term future of solid fuel boosters, like Vulcan's Northrop Grumman Gem 63XLs. Some analysts believe these types of engines are on track to being phased out of civilian rocketry altogether. Solid motors were great in the throwaway era. But in the age of reusable rockets, that philosophy just doesn't fit anymore. As reusability becomes the norm, the focus shifts from cheap to build and discard to robust enough to fly again and again. And that's a shift ULA hasn't adapted to. What do you think will Vulcan eventually find its place in the modern commercial space race? Or is it already too late for ULA to catch up? On social media, there's a lot of skepticism about ULA's future and the Vulcan rocket. Many are questioning whether the company can survive in an era dominated by reusable rockets, with some even speculating that ULA might be sold or worse, shut down entirely. One scenario floating around is that Blue Origin could swoop in and buy ULA on the cheap, taking over military contracts and eventually shifting them to their own rockets. On the other hand, some argue that with New Glenn already up and running, ULA might not bring much value to Blue Origin at all. Other possibilities include internal buyout. The most optimistic scenario is one of ULA's current partners, Boeing or Lockheed, deciding to fully acquire the company. Another candidate often mentioned is L3 Harris, which already manufactures many of ULA's engines, including the one used on the Centaur upper stage. Finally, there's the post-contract shutdown theory. Once Boeing and Lockheed complete their current orders, they might close ULA entirely unable to compete with the next generation of lower-cost rockets, like New Glenn Neutron Nova and Starship. Now, with all that pressure building the missed goals, customer frustration, and SpaceX pulling further ahead, you might think ULA's leadership would be staying quiet. But that's not quite what happened. Facing growing criticism, ULA's CEO Tori Bruno decided to push back, and he did it in classic ULA fashion by celebrating precision over speed. On November 25th, Bruno took to social media to highlight one of ULA's recent wins, the flawless Atlas V via Sat-3 F2 mission. He called it a bullseye launch, and honestly, it's hard to argue with that. The mission, which took place on November 13th, marked the 105th successful Atlas V launch, and it wasn't just another routine flight. The rocket delivered the massive Viasat 3 F2 satellite into orbit with pinpoint accuracy so accurate that the satellite barely needed to use its own fuel to reach its final position. That's no small feat. In an industry where every drop of propellant counts, that kind of precision means the satellite can last longer and perform better.